Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, boy, am I glad we're having this in the morning. Uh, but it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and uh, we're glad that you're here. Uh, welcome to the future home of the author at Blackstone. I'm Tyrone Roderick Williams, CEO of Fresno Housing, and it's my pleasure to welcome all of you all to the construction zone here. Uh, where we officially break ground on 41 units of affordable housing. And boy, it's been a journey. It seems like many of our, almost all of our projects take the scenic route. Uh, but getting here today, I just want to be sure to thank all of you, uh, but also thank our partners. Uh, because uh, as you can see on the sign here, we, we, don't, we are not the Lone Rangers at Fresno Housing. Everything we do is about partnership. And we really appreciate our partners, and uh, you'll be hearing more from them, but also our development team, who uh, are just uh, masters at pulling rabbits out of hats and making things happen. And without their diligence, without their creativity, without their commitment, we would not be here uh, today. And so the author will not only be new, affordable, uh, units for affordable housing. It's our hope that it's going to bring transformation to this neighborhood as we sustainably renovate and, um, and, and move forward to removing blight from buildings that uh, have so much history. And you'll hear a little bit about that history, uh, and I'm learning more about it today. But speaking of history, you may have noticed uh, some of the uh, history of the name. Some of you may have remember, I, I'm new to Fresno, but some of you may remember when this was the Author Toys uh, store. And then, uh, from what I understand, it was uh, also the building that housed uh, the tuxedo uh, store, and where AJ's. And so whether you were a kid, uh, happy to find the toy of your choice, or going to the prom, or your wedding, or any other special event, many people came to this site to uh, find joy and to prepare for other events. And so uh, I just want to acknowledge uh, that um, we're going to continue the legacy for Arthur and the toys. Uh, he was very concerned about young people. And uh, this building will house some young people and give them hope and, and an opportunity. At Fresno Housing, we commit uh, to well-designed buildings, to quality housing that supports families and strengthens our neighborhoods and builds vibrant communities. And uh, that's our mission, and we're going to continue that. My phrase, I know that our team supports this, is when Fresno housing comes to your neighborhood, your property values increase yeah. because of the quality of housing and the design that we come. So we're here to uh, celebrate. And uh, we're going to uh, uh, turn over some dirt. But most about what we're excited about is when we invite you back to not just to, to see dirt, but to be able to see the transformation of the building. And uh, it's going to be quite a transformation. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge our elected officials who have made themselves available to celebrate with us today and to support our work, uh, Mayor Jerry Dyer, <laughs> Council Member Nelson Espraza. I just want to say how much we appreciate, I said partnership is important, how much we appreciate you all's partnership in making projects like this affordable and available, and your commitment to provide funding for ongoing supportive housing uh, projects. Without that, we would not be here today. So thank you all for that. We also have uh, from our county partners, Paul uh, Nearland. Thank you, city administrative officer. Thank you to the county. We've got a lot of projects in the works, and we really appreciate your partnership as well. And then Brett Rush, who's the chief of staff for uh, Commissioner Nathan Matzik. Are you here? Thank you, sir. We appreciate you being here. Uh, last but definitely not least, I want to acknowledge 
the incredible uh, work that the housing, Fresno Housing Board does in supporting our efforts in creating policy and governance in supporting our agency's mission and to create and sustain vibrant neighborhoods. So I would like for you to join us in welcoming our commissioners that are present with us today. County Board Chair, Kerry Catalano. Are there any others that I, I don't, I know that, I, oh, I know about that one. And now, it's my honor to welcome to the podium the City Board Chair, Commissioner Adrian Jones, who has served the Fresno Housing Authority Board for more than 15 years. She was a resident who overcame incredible obstacles to not only move past dependency, but to move into education, to get her degrees, and then to follow her heart's passion. And she's still with us today. And she's never silent about making sure that we are creating doors of opportunity for our residents. So when she climbed up the ladder, she didn't pull it up with her. She made sure that plenty of other people had the same opportunity. That was, see, that wasn't even in my notes. But I know you, Fred. So let's welcome Commissioner Adrian Jones. Wow. Thank you, Tyrone. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Okay. So on behalf of myself and my colleague, Kerry Catalano and the entire board, we appreciate you and we are happy to be here. I am honored to be here today to break ground on this milestone development here in the city of Fresno. As most of you know, and Tyrone just mentioned, I am a former resident. Um, so I'm living proof that Fresno housing knows when individuals and families have access to affordable housing, they're also able to improve their physical, mental, and emotional health. We know that housing is the key connection to so many social detriments of health, and it is our mission to continue to create quality, affordable housing with access to services that improve lives. Access to things like fresh foods, transportation, and of course, education. That is why moments like today are so exciting for all of us. We not only celebrate the past history, but this groundbreaking celebrates the future transformation that will not only transform this neighborhood, but also the lives of the residents who will soon be able to call the Arthur at Blackstone home. None of this would be possible without our many partners, so please join me in recognizing some very important partnerships, including funding partners who have made today possible. We're gonna save our applause until the end, but we do want to thank Brown Construction, the City of Fresno, the California Tax Credit Allocation Committee, the California Department of Housing and Community Development, GGLO Architects, Chase Bank, Redstone Equity, the Kresge Foundation, CVS, and last but certainly not least, the County of Fresno Department of Behavioral Health. I am pleased to now introduce an integral partner who continues to partner with us in housing the most vulnerable in our community. As a practicing associate marriage and family therapist myself, I can assure you that this type of supportive housing would not be successful without the Fresno County Department of Behavioral Health. And it is my honor to welcome the director and one of my former professors, Woo Woo Fresno State, <laughs> Susan Holt. Well, good to be with all of you today. This is a moment of celebration. You know, sometimes we need to pause and remember the significance of events as simple as breaking ground because it is really the launching of a vision years in the making. 
Um, as was mentioned, this is a project bringing forward a legacy of commitment to, to young people. And the, one of the exciting things about this project is that um, we're excited to welcome home to this property persons who are transition age youth. And so um, think back for a moment. Close your eyes. Remember when you were 17, 18, 19, what were your dreams? What were your hopes? Were you going to prom and coming over to AJ's to get that tuxedo? Or were you living in poverty, experiencing adverse childhood experiences, and your goal was to survive? So the folks that we are hoping to wrap our arms around and help support them in, in coming home are vulnerable populations whose transition age period of life between adolescence and adulthood is all the more complicated. It was complicated enough for me, everybody. I'm not going to lie. It was tough. But I had a lot of privileges that others didn't enjoy. And so persons who have trauma, mental health challenges, challenges related to substance use disorder, it's a little bit of a harder road, right? And so achieving stable housing um, is a goal because we know that when folks have stable housing, the ability to advance and soar, as my colleague has been soaring, um, is a little bit of an easier road, a lot of an easier road. So that's what we're here to celebrate today, is the execution of this vision to wrap our arms around persons who come from um, vulnerable circumstances and support them, equip them with the tools and resources that will help them thrive and succeed right here in our neighborhood. So the, one of the cool things about our partnership, um, the County of Fresno is investing significant resources Obviously, as a co-applicant for No Place Like Home funding, um, our great DBH housing team um, poured in uh, countless hours. I don't know if I want to say blood, sweat, and tears, because there might be like an incident report I have to do if there was bleeding. But um, let's just say they worked really, really hard with our fine colleagues at the Housing Authority to make sure we had a top-notch application. And we're so proud that we were awarded No Place Like Home funds. In addition to that investment, the Department of Behavioral Health is contributing nearly $500,000 annually once we're operational for the supportive on-site services for the, the folks that we're so proud and privileged to serve. We'll be providing case management, therapy, recreational support, um, as well as on-site um, uh, therapy and other behavioral health resources. Evidence does show, if you look at the research, that when you wrap services around folks in the place that is the most um, accessible and comfortable for them, their outcomes strengthen. So that's what happens here at Arthur once we're operational, is we'll be providing on-site services through our contracted partner, Exodus Recovery, and they're here with us today. So real quick to acknowledge, again, uh, Paul Nerland. I know your name was mentioned, Paul, but I have to say that nothing that our department does, including housing, would happen without the careful and thoughtful support of our county administrative officer, Paul. So thank you so much for your commitment. You being here today means a lot to our department staff, and it will mean a lot to the people that we serve to have your support. And an extension of Paul, of course, um, our Board of Supervisors approves all of our funding allocations and our projects. And we're really proud that the Board of Supervisors has committed so much to housing in Fresno County. In fact, the Department of Behavioral Health alone, this is our third project this fiscal year that we're celebrating. Um, and so that's just one department of the county's commitment to housing across our entire 6,000 square mile county. So we're really proud to be here today. Um, if I could have quickly the Department of Behavioral Health staff stand so that you could be acknowledged for your hard work. <laughs> and our partners delivering supportive services in many of our housing projects, Exodus Recovery, if you all could please stand and be acknowledged and appreciated.
uh, last before I sit down because I'm getting a little hot. It's, uh, my feet are in the sun. Uh, I will just say that this is um, really exciting to be here. I did receive some feedback that possibly the shoe choice today was not my finest moment. But I assure you, I can do anything in high heels that I can do in tennis shoes. And in fact, I once won third place in a backhoe rodeo. So I might be getting on that uh, heavy construction equipment by the time uh, today is done. Um, but again, the, the reason I joke a bit is we are here for a celebration. So if you all could do something that warms my heart, I would love it if you all would celebrate with me before I sit my butt down. Could I get a big whoop whoop from this group right here? Everybody, one, two, three, whoop whoop. My work is done here. So with that, it is an honor and a privilege to introduce our next speaker, the mayor of the fine city of Fresno, Mr. Jerry Dyer. Thank you, uh, Susan. What an incredible honor to be here today with all of you. And it is an exciting day. Uh, it's exciting for all of us who, who deal with uh, housing and making sure that people have their needs met within our community, especially our most vulnerable populations. Uh, but it is also exciting for those people who are going to occupy uh, these homes here. Uh, I think, uh, unfortunately, many people in our community take for granted uh, housing because they have housing and they've had housing they grew up with housing but unfortunately there are a lot of people in our community that do not have housing with 4200 people in our community that are homeless in the city of fresno that we are able to house an emergency shelter and hopefully transition into permanent housing but if we don't have projects like this we cannot transition people into a lifestyle where they can be productive and successful housing is our most pressing issue in Fresno, but we're not alone. It's like this across the United States of America. I just got back from a U.S. conference of mayors and had, had lunch with the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, uh, Secretary Fudge. And one of the things that we all agree on is the importance of making sure that we have funding available directly to jurisdictions so that we can partner with folks like Fresno Housing and that we can provide a roof over the head for people and services that they so desperately need. That was a driving force before, be behind us as a city, putting together the one Fresno housing strategy with a group of people who are experts in the field, including CEO Tyron Williams. And we met every single week so that we could come up with strategies to be able to address our homeless population in Fresno and the people that are rent burden, the people that can't afford to pay their rent in Fresno, the people that can't afford to own a home in Fresno. You know, we're, we're behind. A across this nation, 60% of the people are own their own home, 40% rent. In Fresno, 40% of the people own their own home and 60% rent. We have a lot of work to do, and how do they get to that point where they can actually buy a home? They have to have a first step. This is a first step for people to have a roof over their head, the services provided, get them the, the job skills that they need, upskill so that they can go on and purchase their own home and live that American dream. What do we need? We need 6,900 affordable units in the city of Fresno over the next three years. That's what our study showed. We need market rate housing, but we need 6,900 affordable units. Uh, whether that is for low-income families or those that are at 50% uh, average median income or 80%, but we need more affordable housing in Fresno, and we're going to provide it. We've identified 47 policies in the city of Fresno that's going to help us to reach those 6,900 units, and I'm confident we're going to do it because of our partnership that we have with Fresno Housing and a number of other builders in our city. We're pushing hard on inclusionary zoning in this city. That means 10% of any of the developments that are going to be uh, anywhere in this city, we're going to have an affordable model for housing within those areas so we don't just isolate those affordable housing units in any one particular part of our city. And how much do we believe in this? We're committing, at least I am this far, and I think the council will be there with me because I have a, a housing champion coming up after me. But we're committing $40 million of American Rescue Funds towards housing over the next year or two. On top of the other dollars that we have, we're proud to be able to commit 1.6 million of home dollars to this project, much needed. 
uh, and I'm proud that we were able to, to commit 2.7 million plus another 2.5 million uh, to the Sun, Sun Lodge to be able to convert that emergency shelter to permanent supportive housing. But we're gonna do so much more in the coming years, but only and only if we work together as one Fresno. We have to care about each other, love each other, and recognize we have some vulnerable people in this community that need our help. 20 of the rooms here are gonna be set aside for those youth that are most vulnerable, those that are transitioning out of our foster care system, uh, those youth that have been touched by the criminal justice system in some form or fashion. We need to be there for them, and we will. So thank you, it's an honor to be here. God bless you. And now I get to introduce our council president, uh, who really is a guy that's enlightened me about housing. When I first came, we first came the mayor, and I go, really? Housing? Housing's an issue? And, uh, and he pushed and pushed, and, and, and uh, I want to say thank you, Nelson, for pushing. Our council president reelected last night, Council President Esparza. Yeah, we, I did have to push a little bit, because last budget I wanted $25 million for housing. I got, I got a few million in there. And this year we're doing, uh, we came all the way, going to 40, 40 plus. We'll, we'll, we'll see where council lands at. Um, but a good morning to everybody. <clears throat> I have the, uh, the great privilege of representing this neighborhood uh, as the council member here in District uh, 7. And I can't tell you how excited I am uh, to be here today celebrating what are, I consider to be two of my favorite things. Uh, that's housing, as you heard from the mayor. Uh, and the other is uh, Blackstone Avenue. Uh, and when they intersect like this, uh, you know, it's a really good day. Uh, I remember when we first, uh, well, when I first came onto the city council, uh, we were talking about this project at the very beginning um, of my term. So again, it's a good feeling that now, here toward the end of my first term, uh, after navigating the process uh, through the pandemic and a number of other challenges, uh, that we're here to see this project come to fruition. Uh, a great thanks. Uh, to uh, Fresno Housing, to you know, Fresno County Behavioral Health, uh, really to all the partners. I know it was a, a long list of partners uh, who, who have helped this project come to, uh, to life. Um, housing is a top priority, if not the top priority uh, for all of us over at City Hall. Uh, it's something that we work tirelessly on and, and does quite literally keep us up at night. Um, and something we worked on again during the entirety of my, my term here, uh, my first term. And so we're incredibly grateful to uh, our partners who step up and are able to take on uh, projects just like this one. Uh, and this project, you know, in particular, I, I do find to be very special um, because for uh, the future residents, it's going to represent so much more than just a place to rest their head at night. Um, I think because of the supportive services component and who it's going to be housing, it's going to represent hope and opportunity. Um, that's the type of environment we want to create here uh, in Fresno, strive to create uh, an environment that's conducive to opportunity for all of our residents. Um, and again, it's, speaking of opportunity, I couldn't have thought of a better place uh, to put this project uh, than Central Blackstone Avenue. Uh, this corridor is considered, I think, the spine of our city. Um, you know, downtown's probably the heart, but this is the spine, also a very important component. Um, and uh, this corridor, I mean, it's, it's slowly but surely uh, evolving. And the Arthur uh, is part of that uh, transformation as we seek out more and more, house, more, and more housing opportunities uh, here on Blackstone Avenue. Um, so again, thank you uh, to everyone for their efforts on this fantastic infill project. Uh, let's continue to rebuild uh, Fresno, rebuild our inner city here. Um, I do, before I sit down, have the pleasure of representing, uh, not of representing, I'm still in campaign mode, I think, um, <laughs> of introducing, of introducing uh, Catherine Kungu. Uh, she's with California HCD. Let's give uh, Catherine a warm welcome. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name again is Catherine Kungu. I work for the California Department of Housing and Community Development and um, part of our team, I wish I could bring all of them so they could be able to see how much, um, how much pride there is here today, especially for, um, for the author. So HCD is really proud to partner with your community to provide much needed housing. Um, the, the funds here at Arthur are just very unique, especially for the funds that we provide within the No Place Like Home program. Um, the funds provide, um, it's one of the only unique funds that provide funds for supportive housing services, um, for case management, peer, 
peer support activities, mental health care, substance abuse, youth services, and also providing those linkages um, to mental health and also um, to physical health care. Again, I wouldn't be remiss if I would say that um, I wish I could bring my colleagues here with me because there are two funding sources that provided funding for this project. That's the infill um, housing and also the No Place Like Home program. But I'm also the folks who also work diligently um, with um, the Housing Authority and also the Fresno County um, for both the No Place Like Home program and also the infill, um, infill program. So congratulations to your community. Uh, we are so, so honored to partner with you and continue to, we're wishing to continue to partner with you, especially as you're working on Fresno, um, one Fresno. So thank you. And now I'd love to introduce um, James uh, Voxhagi. Good morning, everyone, and thank you. What a beautiful day it is here in Fres, yes. That's what I like to say. Fres, yes. As was mentioned, I'm James Vasugi, a banker in the Community Development Banking Group at Chase, and we're thrilled to be here today as a construction lender in support of the Fresno Housing Authority and their continued impactful efforts with this community the Arthur Blackstone, and really so many other communities as well here in Fresno. I think every time I talk to Christina, she's telling me they have about eight, nine, ten applications that they're submitting for new projects. It's, it's amazing the work they're doing. But this former toy store, among a number of different businesses, I talked to someone who told me they once bought a piano at the, the music store that was, was here a while back. They bought their piano here, uh, in addition to attending the toy store when they were younger. But it's gonna serve such an important population that we've talked about, the transitional aged youth population. And it will really help alleviate the, the affordable housing challenges, challenges we have here in Fresno. Chase is committed to working with industry leaders like the Fresno Housing to address these challenges, the affordable housing challenges, to help communities like Fresno to thrive. We'd like to thank the many financial partners involved in getting us where we are uh, today. Redstone, Aetna CVS, the investor, the city of Fresno, the California Department of Health, Housing and Community Development, really everyone up here, as well as the architect, GGLO, and Brown Construction. I'd also like to thank my partner, Derek, over here, who also helped us on our credit approval. That's the important thing to actually getting here. And finally, thank you to the Fresno Housing Authority for their continued efforts in pushing forward such thoughtful, impactful, and well-designed and well-built buildings that will have such a positive impact on the community and the environment as well. And our sincerest gratitude to Mike Duarte, Christina Husbands, and the exceptional project manager sitting over there, Brandon Gonzalez, who really was the driving force behind us here today. And Christina and Brandon just got promoted, so congratulations to that as well. I think that deserves a round of applause. But the Arthur at Blackstone, it's really gonna be another shiny example of what's possible with the Fresno Housing Authority and all of us working together. And we couldn't be more proud to support you. We look forward to continuing to be committed to the Fresno Housing Authority, continuing to be committed to the city and, Fres the city and county of Fresno, and committed to the state of California. Now it's my pleasure, my pleasure to introduce Dr. Rafael Gonzala Amezqua from Atna Better Health of California. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be back here in Fresno. Uh, uh, I uh, asked, actually uh, had an opportunity to work here in the community. I was uh, the medical director for the UC uh, Fresno Educational Program, where we help train the next generation of uh, physicians. A lot of them from the area, stayed in the area. Uh, but I'll tell you that uh, healthcare, delivering healthcare, despite the fact that we have a, one of the best healthcare delivery systems, the challenge was always those who had uh, lack of housing. And these young doctors being exposed to the latest uh, technology and medications were powerless against the fact that some of our patients did not have housing. So it is uh, a, quite an honor for me to be here today. Uh, because at Aetna and CVS Health, we know that the first step to improving your health and well-being is to have access to safe, clean, affordable housing. And that's why in the past three years, Aetna has committed over $27 million to create nearly 300 new senior family and permanent supportive homes in Fresno, including the new homes being developed here at Arthur and Blackstone. Uh, this well-known site has a rich history. 
we're excited to find out that uh, Grace and Art Arthur, who founded Arthur uh, Toy Stores, were the grandparents of one of our very own Fresno colleagues, Monica Prinzing. So, Monica, would you please stand up? So her grandparents were, uh, they own Arthur and Toys. So thank you. We'd like to thank, uh, you know, it, it takes a, in healthcare, uh, it used to be the physician and the patient uh, to address the needs. Now we know that it takes a team of uh, uh, clinicians, not just the physician, but social workers, nurses, community health workers. It actually takes a team to be able to address all the complexities. And as you look further into developing and enhancing healthcare and well-being, we know that it takes more than just the clinical team. It takes the community to come together. So we'd like to thank all of our partners, Redstone Equity Partners, State of California, Fresno Housing, the City of Fresno, the Fresno uh, Department of Behavioral Health, the Fresno Economic Opportunities Commission, the Central California Food Bank, and Clinica Sierra Vista uh, Clinic. Um, it, uh, it, it is a commitment that we continue to grow uh, this strong relationship uh, with our team. And I like our team also at CVS Health, Edna, please stand up uh, and kind of wave, see where you are. Uh, <laughs> as you know, uh, Edna, the health insurer, the health plan is partnered. We're part of a CVS Health family. So as such, uh, we are committed to supporting the unhoused in the Medi-Cal program as well in the years ahead through several new programs. And we are very proud of this collaboration, the work that you all do. Thank you very much. Well, now comes one of the reasons we've all gathered together. I'd like for, first of all, to uh, again acknowledge uh, our Congress, well, Incoming Congresswoman, all goes well with the count, uh, Connie Conway. I'd like for you to join uh, you. Uh, we've got an extra shovel for you. I'd like all of our speakers to join, um, to please stand and uh, join with us at our uh, shovel here. But as they're standing, I'd like for all, uh, first of all, our development department staff, would you please stand? Yes. Please sir. these are uh, the men and women who have made this possible. If you are a part of Fresno Housing staff, please stand. Thank you all for being here.